morning. Good morning. Welcome to Battlefield to the Boardroom. You are live with Philip Folsom and the Wolf Tribe and Colonel Garth Massey and the Command Ready Program. We are talking leadership, life, uh, business, family, all kinds of great stuff. We are live right now and we are recording this and sending it out to you on LinkedIn and YouTube and every kind of social media we can get our hands on because you do the things you talk about. And if we're talking about good things that can improve all of our lives, our business, it, it plays out, it plays out. And so today we got a great idea because of the time of year, we want to hit a big, big topic. Philip, lay it down for him. Gratitude. Gratitude. Super important. <laughs> and hey, you know, we're both leadership guys. And I, I think one of the primary components of leadership is the ability to create your narrative, become the author of your life, establish some sort of a North Star or something we navigate off of. And boy, gratitude is just huge for that. Yeah. So I got hit with a couple things and I, I want to overshare right away. First, mm. I am reminded of when Ulysses Grant, and I didn't just pull this out of the air, when Ulysses Grant took over um, the Army of the Potomac and uh, Lincoln wrote and said, every general I've had has like prepped, essentially I'm paraphrasing, prepped an alibi. They've listed the things that they were short on in their last letters to me as they marched away from Washington. Grant didn't do that. Grant literally wrote him and said, you know, if I, I hope to have all these successes, if it doesn't work out the way that I wanted, it certainly is not through lack of effort on your part. And essentially he said, thank you. Thank you for giving me the army. Thank you for giving me the mission. Now let me go to work. And his letter was just a very short, simple note to Lincoln about gratitude. Instead of prepping for, here's why I'm gonna fail. Wah, wah, wah. And I'm struck by that all the time because in business and life all the time. How many times do we roll out and go like, well, you know, I'm not getting all the clicks I want, but you know, I'm going to make a video and eh, we'll see. And I, I think we set ourselves up for failure. Like we start by building an alibi so that, you know, we, we have the wrong attitude going in. We're not grateful for the connections, for the friendships, for, you know, for all the little things that make getting up worthwhile. And uh, I wanted to throw that out there because I'm feeling sentimental because it's Thanksgiving. Uh, we just had the Marine Corps birthday. We just had Veterans Day. And the number of people you and I are connected to, uh, to be grateful for is phenomenal. And frankly, I'm going to put a bunch of names down below. So if you didn't see this live, you saw it because I'm going to try and tag a bunch of people, although there are way more than I ever could. Um, and I made a small promise and then I'll let you chat real quick. So we, I did a Marine Corps cake cutting ceremony. Uh, we actually kept it down to three guys uh, from OIF uh, one. And one of the guys who was our XO at the time, and I told him I would show it, like had these cups made. Uh, so good. Right? So it's, you know, it's the OIF one. It's got the EGA on it. It's the old canteen cup. It's full of coffee. I've been mm. using it all week. I promised him I would show it. So Colonel Zink, thank you very much. That's uh, great. It's a pleasure. And the, the reason he got it, <laughs> excuse me while we were in iraq um <laughs> i should drink the coffee <laughs> it's not COVID, and i can't give it to you over the thing but talking and drinking and breathing at the same time are hard the reason he got it is while we were in iraq um at the end of the day when we had time we made coffee mm. and we would sit around and we would drink coffee <clears throat> what's going on um and we called it like the, the E8 and Up Club because it was all officers and, and first sergeants and, and sergeant majors. And uh, that little moment at the end of the day, amidst all the chaos of, you know, moving north, uh, was a memory that now 20 something years later or 17 years later, like made him go out and bought canteen cups for everybody. <laughs> and the guys who couldn't come, he bought them cups and he's shipping them out to. Um, but like that one little moment of peace was, you know, years of memories and, and this, this cool connection. Uh, anyway, so it was cool. So I got mine and I, I promised him I would, you know, be on a video. I didn't promise him I would have a coughing fit in the middle of it, but you know, <laughs> drink slowly, be grateful for drinking slowly. Yeah. My, uh, and my uh, approach just when you shared that cool story um, is that we do need to have something to focus on. Uh, when we're practicing or engaging with gratitude 
or, or really an experience of any kind. Otherwise, things get really vague. So having a transitional object like that, uh, which is a, you know, it's a challenge coin that we carry in our pocket. Uh, what, yeah, there you go. Um, I got mine in my pocket right here. Um, if you don't, you buy the drinks. True. Just slap it down. So dude. anyway, transitional objects are are things that anchor um, gratitude. It's a it's something that is a commitment piece to something, whether whatever that thing is. And you know, humans, you know, psychologically are not designed just to sit and think about things. And it's very hard to um, even to sit and think about being grateful. Um, we, the mind spins a lot. And a lot of the research about implementing any type of intentionality of how we want to be is all about we need to either talk about it because that's, you know, the word is creation or we need to write about it. Mm. And so part of gratitude, it, you know, it is about sharing it, which is, you know, that thing we do around Thanksgiving table is you share and usually it's kind of cheesy and nerve wracking, but it feels good. That's why we do it. Or gratitude journals. Uh, you know, I, I wake up in the morning because, you know, I'm, I'm working on gratitude stuff and I lay there and I go, all right. And I, I usually get to two things and I'll oh, let me go do my emails or do whatever I do. But boy, when I write it down or when I share it at dinner, turn the phones off, share the gratitude, it yeah. brings it into reality. So any of those transitional objects or rituals, that's one of the things that were your coffee thing in Iraq was a ritual that right. involved gratitude. I, so as you think about that, right, building the rituals and sharing, the rituals people can do, that's a process. We talked about that. That's daily habits. Um, the sharing is where it gets a little, little, little hinky. Uh, why is it so hard? Like, you know, we live in a world where I think we keep ourselves insular and, you know, COVID hasn't improved that, where we now we have physical distance on top of our protected lives. And sharing our gratitude um, can often be seen as weak, but I got to tell you, like, what a very strong thing to do to be able to look someone in the eye and tell them that you are grateful for what they've done for you. And I'm not talking about thanks for your service. I'm talking about like, you, Philip, have influenced my life in the way we converse and share and partner and bring, um, you know, true value, whether it's culture and teams or leadership fundamentals, you know, to our friends and our clients. Um, we're grateful for that, but it gets turned into a often kind of a, you know, the, the butt end of a joke. Mm -hmm. um, I read, and I don't remember where, but like people are actually more uncomfortable with compliments than they are with criticism which is crazy because you watch someone get criticized and it's just hackles up and, you know, shoulders out and ready to go. And, um, but when you give a compliment, I mean, it just, it, it disarms people and makes everything uncomfortable. And so it just turns into awkward jokes and you end. So why do we do that as you know, the, the anthropology guy, like wh why is it so hard to share our gratitude where we have to make an event like Thanksgiving sit around the table so that we can tell grandma, you know, I'm glad you dated grandpa and, you know, had babies because we're all here. <laughs> um, the, the big part about why sharing of all sorts is difficult for, for us because we're living in a pride-based culture, which is focused on the individual. And somehow we're losing if we're elevating somebody else. And that's not the tribe honor-based culture that you and I both had experiences and you're currently having experiences in, uh, where if your people win, you win. It's a very different uh, marketplace and exchange of the currency of gratitude and appreciation. Yeah. Because when we're a bunch of individuals in a pride-based culture, you know, if I'm giving something to you, then uh, it's hard to have that be reciprocal sometimes. And, and I think that's one of the markers of a pride-based culture. And it's pretty toxic. It really is one of those things that's very, oh. very uncomfortable to do. Yeah. I mean, so uh, we call it crabs in a barrel. Ever talked about crabs in a barrel? If you ever watch like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like, you know, in Maine or in Alaska, where I'm from, when, when they get crabs, they have these open barrels, these giant open barrels, and they put all the crabs in them and they don't put lids on it. And the reason they don't put lids on it, because the crabs can reach up and they're very industrious. They're, they're constantly trying to climb out. They're stepping on each other. They're, they're pulling themselves up. The, they could potentially escape, but they're not to put lids on it 
Because every time a crab works its way up to the top of the pile and starts pulling itself out of the barrel, the other crabs pull it back down. And that's when you talk about pride based. I mean, you know, I don't know that the crabs have the, the brain systems to, to understand what they're doing, but they see one crab advancing or moving away and they grab it and they try and use it to pull themselves up. And so because they're always trying to pull each other past each other and they're fighting their own progress, uh, they don't get out. And so they don't have to put a lid on the barrel. Um, and so, in, you know, pride-based culture is a much cooler way of saying it, but crabs in a barrel is, is where you live in an environment like that, where the people around you uh, are holding you back. I mean, gratitude might be the way to break free of that. Like, and hey, and and let's make the distinction that they're not intentionally trying to hold you back. They're just trying to get forward. Yeah, that's the crabs, right? And and so it, it does lead to a lot of uh, cynicism, which is that's the opposite of gratitude, right? Would be cynicism, and you know that's just running through our entire culture right now negativity cynicism resentment contempt like these are things that are just permeating and it yeah. seems to be this badge of honor of bleakness I think and i'll tell you from a leadership perspective um you know the antidote for cynicism is optimism it is not fun to be around negative people critical people constantly critical right. and a little bit of gratitude boy that it it people what do they say they remember how you made them feel grateful people make you feel good yeah i i like it and the cynicism stuff you're i mean what you're talking about i think manifests as anger i think people are running around hot right now and uh so maybe that's the answer there's got to be something no matter how small that you can be grateful for in your lives and your job in a leadership role, but frankly, as a healthy human or a member of a tribe, to use Philip's stuff, is to find something that you can be grateful for. And you mentioned, you know, you read it at dinner and I, you know you're good at sitting down with your family and you talk about that stuff. I sit down and have dinner with my family. I think it's the single most important thing I can do as a father is have dinner with the family. Um, so not every day if you can't, but, you know, as often as you can, you sit down with your kids and you talk to them. Um, but find that thing, just something that you can be optimistic about or grateful for uh, and talk about it, share it. Don't be afraid, don't hold it in. Um, you know, so I think we'll, uh, let's make an effort to post a couple things we're grateful for in the comments below. If you have something you're grateful for, a person, a company, a product, an idea, a trip, uh, write it in um, because we're, you know, the more things you see shared, the more optimism you see, I think it's easier to be optimistic yourself. And the more negative you see, the easier it is to be negative. Um, so put something down that you're, you're proud of or you're grateful for. And we would be grateful for that. I would be grateful for that. Um, yeah. And, and you'll be actively um, Thanksgiving. That's right. We will be yeah. Thanksgiving. Because next week we get to sit down and do it on purpose. With intentionality, yes. we can be grateful. Ritual. I like it. I like it. So, hey, to my my brothers in arms and and uh, the recipients of the cup, but frankly, all those who have served, I'm grateful for you. It has shaped how I think and, and feel and, and share. Um, Philip, always grateful for these. You know, we keep them short and uh, give you something to chew on for the day. We're out of here. All right. All right, friend.